it's Jess. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. This is going to be my April wrap up. I did also just want to mention that if energy seems down today or if I don't seem as coherent as normal, which is not very coherent if we're being honest, I got really sick last week and I'm feeling better but I'm still not feeling like 100% at the time of filming this. That is also why I missed last week's video too. I'm so sorry about that. I read eight books over the course of the month which is a pretty good month in terms of numbers but I also was sort of battling a reading slump which now that I'm thinking about it was I actually in a reading slump or was I just getting sick and then I got sick <laughs> and that's just I felt like I was like I was like I can't focus I don't care about these books oh I'm also running a fever anyways let's kick things off I have eight books to tell you about today the first book that I want to talk about I read on my kindle it was also my book club's choice for the month of April and that was Among Thieves it is an adult fantasy book and it's the first book in a series there are currently two books out and I am reading the second book and I don't know if it's a dual or if it's the setup to a series genuinely have no idea but honestly I cannot believe that not more people have read this book it's an adult fantasy and it's a high story and like booktube loves high stories loves high stories and you know what this one is really really fun I think I rated it four stars on goodreads it's really more of like a 3.5 I personally don't really care that much about high stories in general like I don't dislike them it's just a very neutral plot point for me personally but I think this one was really well done it is an adult series and I think that that is definitely shown in the fact that like when you compare it to some YA high stories that I've read this one definitely feels more mature and what I really liked about it too is that like the characters I mean you can look at the name of the book Among Thieves you know that like these are criminals except they're not like oh yeah like I'm a criminal with a heart of gold no like they're murderers like they are bad people <laughs> and I mean yes they are also compelling interesting characters and yes they are not like all the way evil I was rooting for these characters I wanted them to succeed but I liked that they were criminals what I also really really loved what I think this book did so well is that each of the characters has their own motivation and you slowly are able to like piece together why they want to steal this this object so badly and what they are going to get out of it and you know for a fact while you're watching this like group of people that even though you are rooting for them even though they are bad people but you like them you want them to succeed that each and every single one of them will stab everybody else in the back. They're all trying to accomplish different things, but like also at the same time accomplish this heist. And so there's just so many moving parts and there's so many ways that this entire operation can go poorly, even outside of the fact that it's a heist story and in a heist story, in order to make it fun, everything has to go wrong. A smooth heist is not a fun story and I think this one was really really well done I genuinely do not know why this book doesn't have more ratings it's like barely been read but I really liked it I recommend it I think it is a fun time was it like the best thing I've ever read no do I think it like changed the fantasy genre no but it was a really really fun well-constructed heist story I think that if you like six of crows there i said it i said it and i think if you also like foundry side then i think that you would have a lot of fun with this story i don't think this is necessarily as well written 
as those books, but it is also a debut novel. This is absolutely a fantastic debut novel. Like I genuinely didn't think that it was. And then I looked it up to see how many books were going to be in the series. And I found out like, this is the author's first novel. And I already think it's fantastic. So will it blow your mind? No, but you'll have a good time. And sometimes that's what you want when you're reading. Next up, I read the second book in the Arrows trilogy by Mercedes Lackey. Honestly, all of these books I read for the Magical Readathon and all of them but two. I have vlogs and this one is one of the books that's in a vlog. This is Mercedes Lackey's second book that she ever wrote. It is the first trilogy in her Valdemar series and it is fine to good. <laughs> I have a goal this year that I want to reread this trilogy and her second trilogy and you know what? This, uh, it's fine. It's fine. I had a good time with this. It's like a three and a half star. It is definitely a nostalgic read and what I think this book has going for it is that Mercedes Lackey's writing is very cozy. Now, this is not a cozy fantasy, but there is something about the way she writes that makes you feel very cozy. This whole series you follow Talia who is a young girl living in this isolated border community in the country of Valdemar and it's a very oppressive society especially if you're a woman. I mean it's repressive for everyone but especially if you're a woman. Talia has spent her life reading these like epic tales of the heralds. This series kind of goes into what it means to be a herald of Valdemar and there's a lot of world building. If you want to get into Mercedes Lackey this is the series that you have to start with even though it is only fine to good. Talia basically has spent her whole life reading about these heralds and that's what she wants to be. Unfortunately, she is about to be married off and then wouldn't you know it, wouldn't you know it, a companion comes and chooses Talia and takes her away to train to be a herald. Companions are these like horses. They're not horses. They have like the same intelligence as humans. They are very magical, but um, they are shaped like horses. <laughs> she is whisked away and she begins training to become a herald. The first book is basically her training and then in book two it is her internship period. I had a good time but <laughs> this is also a very nostalgic read for me. Do I recommend Mercedes Lackey? Absolutely I do. Are there some issues with this series? Yeah. Of course there are. Next up, I want to talk about Omari and the Great Game by B.B. Alston. This is also in a vlog and this book is perfect. This is a series where you follow Omari. Her brother has gone missing. Everybody thinks that he is dead, but Omari is convinced he is not. Then in the first book, Omari gets this briefcase which has a message from her brother and it invites her to participate in a tryout for the Supernatural Bureau of investigation and Amari is like is this what happened to my brother? Like, did he disappear here? Like, what is the Supernatural Bureau of Investigation? And so she is convinced if she goes there and participates in this summer program and tries out that it will give her clues that will lead her back to her brother. Also, sounds super cool. So Amari goes and she tries out for the bureau. That is year one. In year two, it is like her first year as like a full-fledged member. I'm sorry if it's a spoiler that like she gets in, but like also it is a middle grade, so we can kind of assume that she's gonna get in. So she becomes a full trainee in year two. I can't really tell you too much about what like the plot of this is. I will say that there are kind of like two main plots. The first one is that there has been like a time freeze bomb at like the supernatural congress. So like all of the supernatural like political leaders have just been frozen in time. And then also Amari is participating in this thing called the Great Game. And unfortunately, I cannot tell you anything about what the Great Game is without giving massive spoilers for book one. But it is dangerous and it is 
fun for the reader, not for Amari. Amari has a really bad time in The Great Game. But yeah, I think this is genuinely a perfect book. I rated the first book in this series five stars. This one is even better. Like it is literally perfect. I cannot think of a single thing in the entire book that I think should be changed. It is just so so very excellent and well crafted and constructed. If you like middle grade, I highly, highly recommend this series. And honestly, I think more people need to read this series. Okay, next up, I wanna talk about The Chalk Man by C.J. Tudor. This is an adult thriller and you follow two timelines in this. One timeline set in the past, I think in like the 80s, if I'm remembering that correctly, where you follow Follow this group of kids and they stumble upon a dead body eventually. In the past the kids all got like these sidewalk chalks and they would like go to each other's houses and use the chalk to like leave messages for each other just like outside the house but then the chalk messages start to change a little bit and they're wondering like is it them leaving the messages? Is it somebody else? Is it like something supernatural or is it just like another person? Is it an adult? Is it the murderer? They're not really sure what's going on but things get really really creepy. And then you also follow in the present day one of the kids from that group. This is all like single POV from like the same person. Now we're kind of dealing with like, where does your life go after that? And even though he's tried desperately to put everything behind him, he starts getting some more chalk messages and it's like, well, what really happened? From just like a thriller, twisty, turny type of deal, this book is fantastic. When I was reading this, I felt like CJ Tudor was like a master of distracting me from what was right in front of my face. There were so many moving parts in here and the fact that it went back and forth every chapter in the timeline you would like find these little crumbs and it's not that I would forget about the crumbs it's that like she would sprinkle a crumb here and then a crumb here and while I'm looking at that crumb then like the next chapter it's like boom we go back to this one and then it makes the reveals feel very shocking not because I wouldn't have been able to put it together but because there's so many moving parts you kind of just forget. This is definitely one of those stories where it's not just one thing happens and it leads to another. It is a lot of characters doing a lot of different things and a lot of characters making little tiny mistakes that lead to the final outcome. And as you're learning about all of these little tiny events, you forget about some of the other events because they felt so small and then all of a sudden they come back around and just like hit you in the face and you're like, oh my god. CJ Tudor did a fantastic job with the twists and the turns and the reveals and the pacing of this. But what I will say that I really hated was the POV that's written in here. It is this dude and it's very very male gazy and like it kind of to be honest it ruined the reading experience a little bit like I did not enjoy my time in this book because of the point of view it's really hard because like from a craft point of view this book is so good but like from an enjoyment point of view, it is not fun at all. I don't necessarily recommend this book. I think if you want to give it a go, it is a really well-crafted thriller. It's just, you know, keep in mind what I said, like you might not have a good reading experience with it. Next up, I read I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. This is Jeanette McCurdy's memoir talking about her childhood and her teen years. It is fantastic. It's very, very well written. Jeanette McCurdy definitely has a distinct author voice. You can tell she has quite a few bits of like deadpan humor in here that I think worked really, really well with how serious this memoir is. I don't need to be the person recommending it to you because to be honest, everyone has read this at this point. It is extremely, extremely popular and for a very good reason. It is absolutely fantastic. I will say though that there is a lot 
of content warnings within this book. I think particularly the two biggest ones is parental abuse and eating disorders. I highly, highly recommend this book if you can handle the subject matter, but again, it's also super popular, so you have probably already heard about this book. You have probably already read it. I'm very late to this party, but it is absolutely fantastic. Next up, I read A Fate Inked in Blood by Danielle L. Jensen. This is a fantasy romance and I really, really liked this. I thought this book is great. So this is a book that is inspired by Norse mythology and in this you follow Freya and she is gods touched, which means that she has like a drop of god's blood in her. And the reason that I wanted to read this in the first place is that her drop of god's blood comes from a protection goddess and so she is a shield maiden, which I just think is so interesting. It's not very common to have the main character's magical abilities be something that is like defensive and protective rather than offensive magic. So I thought that was pretty unique. Freya her entire life has been hiding her magic because there is this prophecy that says that the shield maiden is going to like unite the entire land and whoever controls the shield maiden will become king. So she's been hiding her magic but obviously, otherwise there's no book. In the beginning of this, the Jarl finds out that she is a shield maiden and he takes her and marries her as his second wife so that like he can control her and then therefore become this legendary king. This is a book for people who like quest stories. Like for real, I loved this. First of all, I think the world is super interesting. I think the world is very well developed and I felt fully and completely immersed within the world. Because Freya is not entirely in control of whatever situation she's in, the book kind of does feel a little like meandering. However, that's not a bad thing in my opinion. This is a book for people who like quest stories. Personally, I love a quest story. They're some of my favorites. Like, I love a character trying to get from A to B, but they can't because there's 800 roadblocks in the way, and so we gotta end up going like this, and like that's what this story is. So like I understand that some people read it and they're like, we're not even doing anything, like we're never gonna get to where we're going, like it's just meandering all over the place, we got a side quest here, side quest there, and so I get that like that is not the type of story for everybody, but for me, I love it. I don't know why, I just really, I love side quests in books. I think it's so fun. I love seeing these roadblocks get placed in front of our characters and seeing how they are going to navigate around them to get to what the actual objective is. I also really loved the magic in here and I loved how actual present and real the Norse gods are to these people and like like they are there and they are watching Freya and they things go real bad sometimes. <laughs> I personally really enjoyed this. I definitely recommend this if it sounds like something that you're into. I did want to also mention that I do like the romance in this book, but I also think that the plot of this could stand alone without the romance. And I think the romance enhances this book, but it doesn't actually change how this plot would have worked out, in my opinion. I recommend this. Now we are at a weird point because the next book I want to talk about is Starling House by Alex E. Harrow. This is a gothic haunted house story. And I'm not gonna lie, I really, like, I don't remember very much about this. <laughs> I think this is like when I was like right about to get sick. This is the book that I kind of like blame my reading slump on, but like in retrospect, I think it's just like me not feeling well. I do talk about this like in my most recent video more in depth, so you can definitely go watch that if you want to know better how I feel about this book. I 
just remember that I liked it and I did recommend it if you like gothic stories and I remember that this is definitely not plot heavy, this is plot light. This is a story really about loneliness and how you make connections with other people. But to be honest, I like really don't remember this book. I'm so sorry that like really looks bad for the book. I just read this like a week ago, but I do know that I talked about it in my last video and I know that like I must have had more to say in that video. Like I hope I did, but yeah, that's Starling House. I liked it. Then the last book that I have to talk about in this video is When the Moon Hatched by Sarah A. Parker. Oh baby, did I love this book so very much. So I think on Goodreads I rated it five stars. It's really more of like a 4.5. There were definitely some things about this book that I didn't like that kind of like took me out of it. However, the feelings that this book gave me and like how it made my heart feel so full and happy and just like how excited I was to pick up this book and read it. Like that's a five star feeling. Like it's a five star read. It made me love reading. So this is a fantasy romance and I think it is like a fantasy romance for the readers that love like high epic fantasy. The world building in here and and like the style of the writing and how much time we spend with our characters getting to know them, the pacing of it, all of it feels very like epic high fantasy setting. And so this is a book where you follow this main character and she is kind of an assassin. She does kill a lot of people but like that's not the only thing she does. She is currently working in the slums of this city. There are like three main countries within this world and she's working in the capital of one of them and it's very impoverished in the area she works and she is kind of working for this rebellious faction. You know what I really really love, I love it when a book is like, hey, this girl's a murderer and then you see her murder people. She, she does some stabbing and it's on page and there's quite a bit of blood. I appreciate when, you know, words are backed up by actions. That is kind of just like the hook to get you into the book. The actual plot just really goes from there in a completely different direction and then I have a feeling in book two we're gonna like wrap back around and I'm just like not sure how much I can reveal because like the main character ends up getting caught and then she's in jail and then like you know like she's meeting people and there's just a lot of moving parts and I don't want to reveal too much about this. There's a lot of politics in here and I think that in I think in book two we're kind of gonna wrap around from where we ended up at the end of book one to kind of like get back into some of the politics. I also really love the magic in here. It is like elemental magic. And again, dragons. The dragons are so cool and there are like a lot of them. Like there's a lot of mention of the dragons. Genuinely, I think it's really good. I think it's really good. Now, I will say that this book is one of those books where like they're not human. So instead of using like man and woman, they use male and female. And I just, I hate it. I really hate it. That's like the biggest problem I had with this book is that they're constantly like, this male, this female. And I was like, oh my God, I get it. I get it. Stop. Am I nitpicking? Maybe. But like, to be honest, that's why it's not a full five star. That's why it's only a 4.5.
because that drove me crazy and like it's a lot it's not just like occasionally it's a lot it's like I get it they're not human you can still say woman and man though like you can I still highly recommend this I love it okay there you go those are the eight books that I read in the month of April once again I'm so sorry if this video isn't coherent I'm so sorry if the energy isn't there I just I don't feel good I don't feel good Hopefully I will be fully 100% recovered by next week's video. If for some bizarre reason you actually like this video, please consider subscribing. At this point, I do not know what next week's video is going to be. It's going to depend on how well I'm feeling. So your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> I hope that you stay safe this week. I hope that you are healthy and not sick and I really appreciate you spending some time here with me today. I will see you next week. Goodbye!